Yes, at the moment. Welcome everyone. My name is Anju. For those who haven't met me before, is anyone completely new to yoga? You're okay. All right. So this is a relaxed class and we will be doing um, as little movement as possible. <laughs> um, and the style of yoga that we use for relaxation is yin. Um, as opposed to Hatha. So Hatha is more the yang, the movement and the activity. So we'll be slowing it right down to stillness. Okay, and that's what we're aiming for. So um, without any more introduction, really, I'm going to ask you to come into the first pose, which is lying on our front and taking the soft blanket. This is an option somewhere where your navel can rest here on the blanket. And then you can go as far down as you wish. We try and rest the head on maybe your forearms or your hands or on the bolster what, or a block, whatever feels right for you. Now, because we're holding postures, you, we really emphasize the comfort so find something that's comfortable for you and works for you. So we, we want to feel and uh, in the belly. We want to breathe into the belly and feel the expansion. And it might expand into the side body and the back body. Just feeling the breath in the belly against the blanket, against the floor. So the reason why we're breathing into the belly here is to stimulate the belly, the organs here, the digestive area, so that it can do its work. It can help us to let go of what we no longer need to hold on to. And this is what we're going to focus on today. What is it that I can let go of? And this has come by because we are exploring the Four Noble Truths of Buddha that Buddha had spoken about, the Four Noble Truths, which are firstly that suffering exists. Secondly, there is a cause of our suffering. And usually that is around holding on to views or routines or practices or something that felt pleasant. And then the third, which is where we are at, there is a cure for suffering. So I'm just going to read a little bit of a, from a passage on, under the heading, there is a cure for suffering. Nirvana. This is often referred, the cure is often to, referred to as Nirvana. But this is not always a preferred destination. Nirvana can be easily mistaken for just another state of being which in itself becomes desirable, something that we attach to. And once attachment arises, again, the cure does not work. In this respect, Nirvana can become as much of a trap to, the, to a Buddhist seeking liberation as Samadhi can be a trap for the yogi. So if you are not familiar with Samadhi, that is the term um, when we, we um, used to describe bliss, the blissful state, that, that state where you meditate and you are in another place, in another zone. Okay, so attachment seems to be the word. What is it that I am attached to? So what is it that I can let go of? Just going to carry on breathing, maybe five or six more breaths here and contemplating on this. What is it that I can let go of? Noticing if there is any holding going on in the body right now. Noticing if there is anything you can soften 
release, let go of. Maybe mentally. We'll take one more breath into the belly. And then we'll make our way on into a child pose. So we take a kneeling position. Let the hips go back. You might even use that blanket for your forehead. Hips go back towards the heels and we rest the head once again. The arms are nice and soft and relaxed. So no muscle use whilst we are relaxing ourselves. The muscles don't work when we are using soft tissues to stretch and the soft Tissues won't stretch if we are trying to use our muscles. So focus on the stretchy things around our joints, ligaments and tendons. Let go of muscle use. We've got two more breaths here in child pose. And every exhalation is that magic elixir. This is where we feel that groundward passiveness, that letting go, that sinking feeling. Okay, and then we're going to walk the hands towards the legs and roll up through the spine. Maybe place a blanket to one side. Rolling the lower spine, the mid, up the mid spine, up to the shoulders, opening up the front of the shoulders. Stacking the head on top. And then we're going to make our way to a standing position. So if you've got mats close to one another, you might want to stagger yourself. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of movement, just gentle movements to get rid of any, any tension or any tightness around the joints. So we're gonna start by shaking. First, circling the head, let's do that. Right ear to the right shoulder. And then down towards the front of the body. You can take a bit of a side bend if that feels good. Over to the left and then forward again. Over to the right. Exhale, drop the head down to the center. Over to the left. Gentle circles. And then once more to the left. Exhale down to the center and inhale, just lifting the head upright. And then we can go back, look up if you wish or close the eyes. And if you wish, you can circle the head this way and that way or all the way around, whatever feels nice. Just noticing any tight spots, any tensions, you can drop the shoulders away and feel that stretch of the sides of the neck. Okay, so then coming back up right through the center, just lifting the head upright, the crown up towards the ceiling. We're going to now move into the shoulders, shrug them up as you inhale, up, up, up tight. Exhale, throw the arms down, that's it, again. Exhale, throw the arms down, any tension coming out of the shoulders and exhale it away. Let's do two more. Exhale, let it go. Once more. <clears throat> okay, wonderful. And now we're gonna shake out the arms. I'm gonna shake out the wrists and the hands. And then we're gonna shake out the legs wibble into the wobbly bits <laughs> and the shoulders and everything, shake it all up. Okay, swinging the arms now. 
<laughs> ready to go to the right and slap gently the sides of your body this way that way you can swivel as much as you wish on the legs and the hips no uh, holding just letting it happen and then coming slowly back to center and then we're going to start on the left let's go left to the right and just swinging feeling grounded through the feet and the legs just feeling that air cooling you down as you swing Sorry, that way, just let it happen. Let the arms be like heavy uh, limbs. <laughs> and then slowly back to the center. Okay, breath of joy. We take our arms up. We swing them back and maybe squat a little, bend into the knees, swing them back. And then inhale, swing them up and all the way up, up, up. And then swing back and fold, yeah? So we're going to do this a few times. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, soften the knees, and it's like a ski jump <laughs> shape. Inhale, all the way up and back as much as you wish, and then swing them with a great big swing. Inhale, exhale, inhale, up and back, and then exhale, swing and throw away anything behind you that no longer serves you. Inhale, up and reach back, and exhale, right behind you once more. E jump position, inhale, reach up and back, and exhale, throw it away behind you. Well done. Let's come into a forward fold. Now, the forward fold is with very soft knees. Bend as much as you need. See if your belly can rest on your thighs. And then drape the upper body, the torso, over the legs. Let the head hang as if your arms and hands are weights, they're dragging you down, your head is a heavy weight, it's just hanging off the neck. We'll spend a minute in our fold, forward fold, Uttanasana, in yoga, in Hatha yoga. Forward fold, just letting everything drape. And then with the next inhalation, see if you can point your tailbone up a little, as everything drapes from the waist up, uh, downwards. Inhale, point that tail up just a little more. And exhale, let everything from the waist droop and drop groundward. making sure you're still breathing. And the breath usually is low in the belly, expanding into the belly, even though it's tight against the legs, exhaling, softening into the belly. Two more breaths, inhale. And exhale. Inhale, point that tailbone. Exhale, just let everything hang. And then we're going to roll up. We're going to drop the tailbone back as if we're perching onto a stool. Start rolling up through the lower spine, the mid spine. Stacking the vertebra on top of each other, opening the shoulders and the head stacks on top. And then we're going to roll the same way down, roll the shoulders. The head starts to nod slowly, vertebra by vertebra. We roll, curving the spine, soft knees, belly coming to the thighs. And then we'll walk the hands forward. We'll step the feet back into downward dog. <coughs> soft knees, absolutely fine. Then inhale to drop the knees nice and gently so we're on all fours. And we're going to do another little flow. We're going to do it five times, inhaling into a cow shaped spine. And exhaling into a cat shape. Inhale, uh, sorry, exhaling to 
press down to pick up the knees and find your downward dog. Inhale to cow, that's the reason my music stopped. <laughs> Exhale into cat, arching into the spine. Keep exhaling and press down to pick up the hips into downward dog. And again, inhale, cow. Exhale, curl the spine upwards, press down. Pick up the knees nice and gently and the tailbone up to downward dog. And again, inhale to cow. Exhale to cat. And then we go straight into our downward dog. And then I'll mess around on this to get it started again as you rest in child pose for a couple of breaths. Okay, letting those hips go way back. Every exhalation, we feel that letting go, that dropping. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming up onto all fours with the next inhalation. And then exhale back to our downward dog. Pressing down into the hands and feet to pick up the knees, pick up the tailbone, let the head drop. And wiggle around here. You can walk on the spot. Still not working for some reason. What's going on? Okay, so we're going to take our shape into a uh, swan shape. Going to pick up the right foot, stretch that right leg out behind us, and then bring that right knee towards the right wrist as we exhale. And then inhale, pick it back up behind us. And this time exhale to drop the right knee towards the right wrist, the right foot across the mat to the left. And then you'll find our version of swan. That's it, right knee towards the right wrist, right foot, go somewhere across the mat, whatever's comfortable for you. For some reason my uh, music doesn't wanna play now. The left leg is extended back behind us. The left foot directly pointing back. So try not to turn at the ankle, okay. So that left leg in line with your left hip, you can take a little look over your left shoulder. You've got options, twisted swan, where we drop the right hip, but we still try and keep that left uh, leg facing down, front right left hip facing down. And you can fold as much as you wish. You could even twist that left elbow over to the right. Or keep the right hip lifted, the hips parallel, and fold down the center as much as you wish. So finding your uh, option and we'll spend two minutes here and I'll give you an indication when one minute is up just in case you want to try something different. Okay, inhaling into the belly, exhaling softly, letting go as much as you can. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling, exhaling, that's all we need to do. And maybe consider what it is that you can let go of. So sorry, this music works last time. Let's see if something else will happen. Just focusing on the breath. The exhalation to help you soften. Noticing anything that your body might be holding 
maybe the mind is holding. Device one connected. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I think it's time to take two more breaths here. Oh, I don't know what's going on here. And then we'll slowly lift up the right hip. Come on back onto hands, tucking the back toes, picking that left knee up, and then finding that downward dog position once again. You can walk it out and wiggle up into the hips. And then be still, take a breath and down. Device one, connected. And then we'll switch left leg if you pick it up behind you. And then exhale, bring that left knee to the left wrist. And this sort of setting up for pigeon, feeling that set up. Inhale, pick that left leg back up. And then this time, bring it to the left wrist. Left foot across the mat somewhat. And then slide the right toes back back. The right leg in line with your right heel. Pointing those toes directly back. Choose it. Which is it that put your body for first? Either left hip on the floor and folding over the left leg or twist the right elbow across to the left. Or does your body, your knees, your joints prefer hips parallel and folding down the center? Your choice. Now remember, it's a posture that is comfortable because when we're comfortable in the body, the mind will also settle. And we inhale. Once we found that comfortable position, and we exhale to let. Maybe bringing that question to mind, what is it that I can let go of? Is it the hips? Is it the shoulders? The head? Is it something that I've been thinking about and holding on to? Is it some sort of feeling that I keep revisiting and it's not working for me, it's not healthy? Anything that no longer needs to be held. Can I let it go? And each breath is an opportunity to let it go. We have one minute, so if you wish to switch with your position and try the other version ahead. Two more breaths now, slow 
Start lifting and waking with the sword, coming back onto hands, tucking the back toes, lifting that back knee. Lift the hips, squeezing down into the hands to find your belly button. And just walk it out, stretch one leg, the other leg. Okay, another few breaths in child pose. So gently bringing the knees down as wide as you wish. Exhale, send the hips back. Be nice and soft, nice and easy with your child. Okay, broken wing is our next pose. Coming on to all fours, we're going to make our way down to four arms, front body. Rolling down into the mat. And then this right arm, we're going to thread it under the left. And either the right side of the head rests, or if you wish, the front of the head. Somehow we come all the way down to rest over our broken knee. Our right arm has a broken knee. Letting that. Right shoulder soften. You might even feel soft tissues around the shoulder starting to lengthen as we just drop the body weight. Let go. To protect maybe our broken weight. Leaning into it. Onto it. Maybe we can assess whether this is broken. And then it's time to let go. Into that right forearm to take the left arm with them. And again, take, hold, take whatever position you can to rest onto your body. Let everything be soft. The fingers gently curl in. The head feels heavy. And the shoulders, the upper body feels heavy a little bit. Worry, it will actually break. <laughs> and hold the weight. So almost comfortably by releasing any tension around the left shoulder. Gravity is a great assistant. Breathing in the breath, 
Two more breaths. And then we slide that leg down now, just take your head a little further on And then opening the arms, the elbows wide, right, sorry. We come into a complete rest which is known as crocodile pose. So if the toes come towards each other, the heels drop out. Feel the front body really anchoring down, really dropping, feel the organs inside the heart. What is it that I can let go even more? Just two more breaths in crocodile. And then we're going to walk our hands out. So we come on to our all fours position, hands down by the sides of the chest, pressing down to lift the torso up. And then walking the knees forward, we bring the seat down to the middle of the mat, swing those knees forward. And we're actually going to come on to our spine with the feet on the mat, knees up to the side. Take the knee, uh, feet wide, wider, almost as, as wide as the mat. And then just windscreen like both knees over to the right. Inhale back to the center. Windscreen wide, both knees to the left. Inhale, center. And we're gonna, gonna do this a few more times each side. Inhaling to the center, exhaling to drop to one side. Inhale, center. Exhale to the other side. Inhale, center. Exhale. And then inhale to center. And this time, heel toe the feet back towards each other. And actually bring the soles together so that the knees drop apart in this down butterfly pose. Uh, if you if your legs and your inner um, groin area is feeling too stretched, you can always take blocks under the knees to support your legs so that you're not overstretched. And we will be here in butterfly pose for two minutes. Breathing into the belly, like expanding a balloon slightly, exhaling, feeling that softening. Maybe even feeling that softening into the lower spine, allowing the spine to drop and relax. 
the huge exhalation. Anything else I can let go of right now on my mat. Just a little more letting go to be done. Two more breaths. to help the legs with using your hands help the legs to come back towards each other closing the knees just take a breath and then pick up the knees to hug them in towards you maybe even lift the head towards the knees curl up into a little ball into a little seed shape to release the left leg all the way down the mat and today we're going to place the right foot down with the knee, right knee pointing up both arms down by the sides of the body we're going to end with a little flow again a little gentle movement as we inhale pick up the right arm and press into the right foot into the inner edge to twist that right knee over Look to the left side, just point the right knee over to the left. The right arm goes back to the back of the mat and exhale, go back to the starting shape. Okay, inhale, twist the right knee over to the left of the arm, the right arm reaches all the way back. Point that right knee away and exhale all the way back. And once again, inhale. I'm going to use the other arm now, but the same knee. Inhale, left arm reaches up and back. Right knee pointing over to the left. And all the way back. Inhale. Right knee pointing over to the left, left reaching back, and all the way down. And we'll do three times with both arms, same knee. Inhale, both arms up and back. Right knee pointing over to the left, and all the way down. Two more. Inhale, and Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Okay, let's just take a moment. Bring the left foot back onto the mat. Extend the right leg. And we're going to do the same again. We start with the left arm, pointing the left knee over to the right as we inhale. Exhale, float it back to the start. Inhale. Exhale. One more on this side. Inhale. And exhale. Switching arms. Inhale, put the right arm back, up and back. Point through that left knee. And exhale. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Inhale. And exhale. Three with both arms. Inhale. That full stretch in the side body. Point the 
left knee over to the right, exhale all the way back to the to take your shavasana shape. So you can have both feet on the mat, knees wide, knees might not, sorry, feet wide, knees might not be towards each other. You can have a roll under the knees, a soft roll if you want to extend your legs, take blankets for when for a pillow if you wish, one over your body, just eye pillows, whatever you think you need. If you have any twinging, in the lower back, it's good to keep the knees slightly bent, so maybe take that roll under the knees and switch off the backs. So there's always the option of lying on the belly like we did when we started if that felt nice. Sometimes I like to finish on the belly. When you're settled in your shavasana shape, just taking a couple of mindful breaths in order to Find that letting go, allowing the spine to drop completely. Let the backs of the back of the ribs drop. Notice the pelvis feeling heavy and anchored. The legs heavy, feet soft, and each toe is relaxed. Notice if there's any holding. And then with the next exhalation, let the breath move through that place of holding. Let it soften, let the breath be your magic elixir. The palms open upwards to the ceiling, and the fingers gently curl under, and the shoulder blades equally rooted down. Finding stillness in the body. as if it was on a layer of snow. Imagining yourself on a layer of snow. Stillness in the breath. Like the stillness after a storm. Stillness in the mind. Like the big blue sky on a bright sunny day. Maybe the tiniest cloud floating around. Start to notice the breath once again, entering into the nose, feeling the texture as it exhales from the nose, feeling the warmth, maybe noticing the size of your breath, the inhalation. Is it equal to the exhalation? Is one longer or shorter? Mm -hmm. 
Noticing that you're traveling away from the outer world, the outer layers of yourself. Traveling inward. Maybe coming back to that question. What else can I let go? Turning to your breath and bringing any messages that your body, your mind has given you. Bring them to the mind, keep them, bring them to the fore. Begin to breathe a little deeper, a little more inhalation. And as you exhale, send some of this prana, this energy to the toes. Start to feel the energy into the toes, in the toes, start to move them gently. Feel the energy in the fingers. Start to gently move into the fingers, maybe brushing the thumb, the fingers with each other. Then begin to move into the hands and the feet. Gentle movements into your arms and your legs. You could just turn them in and out, in and out. Taking another deeper inhalation. Maybe even taking a stretch or any sort of body movement that helps you to wake up completely. Back into the body container. Then bring the feet onto the mat, maybe. Hug those knees into the body now. Squeeze them tight over the front of your body. Squeezing all our organs down towards the back body, towards the ground. And then just roll over to your left and let everything rest. Your legs, your feet, your hands and arms, your head. Taking a few moments on the left side. Blinking open your eyes, adjusting to the darkness in the room, the dim light around you, making sure all your senses are switched on. And then come into a seated position. stacking that spine up on top of itself and then we'll gather up the energy into the hands send some out there to the universe maybe to someone you know needs it and then bring some to yourself to your mind for pure thoughts your mouth for kind words 